So we can go ahead and uh, start. Uh, this is the uh, City of San Diego Commission on Police Practices Ad Hoc Trans Transition Planning Committee meeting of Friday, April the 9th of 2021. Uh, present are myself, Doug Case, as chair of the committee. Uh, Brandon Hilpert, ex officio member. Uh, he is the chair of the commission. Uh, members of the committee, Patrick Anderson, Diana Dent, Joe Craver, Nancy Vaughn, our executive director, Sharmine Mosley is present and our liaison with the San Diegans for Justice, Kate Yevendetti is present. Um, and uh, we need to uh, select a note taker for uh, this week. Uh, I'm happy to do it, except that I, le I, I have to leave at about one. Hopefully we'll be done by one. Uh, okay, then I'm happy to do it. And uh, and is there any uh, public comment? No public comment received, thank you. Okay, then we'll go ahead and do the updates and there are only a couple of updates so I'll kind of do them collectively. Um, we should be getting uh, the uh, draft of the uh, Proposed city budget uh, next week, I think on Monday. Is that right, Charmaine? I know it's next week sometime. Next week sometime. I'm not exactly sure if it's going to be Monday or next Wednesday. Okay. And so we will send that out uh, to uh, to the committee. Uh, we've been getting good vibes uh, from uh, the mayor's office. And uh, so uh, we think that what we're asking for, we will be, we'll be getting. Um, but we... We'll let you know, and uh, we'll let you know as the budget process uh, continues. Just as a reminder, um, <clears throat> some things we may have to add to it. Uh, for example, the start date of our policy analyst, uh, which we recommended um, be as soon as possible. Uh, probably the start date that we initially recommended of uh, January 1st will probably still be in the uh, first uh, preliminary budget. And so we'll have to request uh, a change for that. Um, and then the other news is that the uh, full city council, uh, hold on just a second here. April Sorry about that. Yeah, it's going to be April the 26th. And so the items uh, that uh, were um, presented and approved uh, by the uh, PSNLN committee uh, at their March meeting uh, will be uh, adopted then. And so that'll include the creation of the department, the appointment of the uh, uh, interim executive director, and the approval of the uh, um, interim uh, op standard operating procedures. Um, so all, all three of those have to be approved. Uh, and uh, the creation of the department is an ordinance. And so it'll have to go through a second reading and then it goes into effect 30 days thereafter. So it'll be almost the beginning of the new fiscal year before uh, that happens, uh, but it's moving, it's moving forward. And I don't think there's any other updates it, Unless Brandon or Charmaine, you can think of anything. No other updates. I, think I, I was gonna say, I think that's it. So, okay. Um, and then what I wanted to uh, focus on today was the uh, draft document that I sent out. Um, uh, Joan Dawson had requested over a month ago uh, that you know, information on what we envision for investigations. Um, and uh, we're going to be giving her a fairly uh, complete answer to that uh, to that question, probably more than she was anticipating. Um, and as we discussed uh, uh, last week, I think it would be helpful to break it down by things that need to go into the ordinance that she's writing, um, things that will need to go into the uh, standard operating procedures, uh, which will need to also be approved by the city council and both of those will likely need to go through a meeting and confer. Uh, those things uh, that uh, will need to be in an MOU uh, with the uh, POA and uh, those things uh, that uh, 
the commission itself uh, can do by it creating its own uh, standing rules, other uh, other documents. Um, and so that basically is what I would like to go over today. Um, keeping in mind that uh, the purpose of that is to answer the question that was uh, asked by Joan of uh, what do we envision an investigation including uh, and uh, Charmaine asked the question of whether this document needs to uh, be approved by the full commission before we send it to Joan um, and uh, and that's a good question because we you know all committees uh, make recommendations to the full commission. Um, you know, on the other hand, we have been, you know, making some decisions as we go along, like with regard to the budget and so forth, we've been communicating back and forth. Um, my initial thought and other people can chime in was it, it maybe it probably would be wise as a matter of protocol to get our, this committee's recommendations, uh, blessed by the full commission, um, but I also think it uh, would be helpful to uh, go ahead and uh, share the draft with Joan. My concern is that Joan is going back, is going to be presenting uh, to PSNLN in May a first draft of the ordinance. And I want to make sure that she understands what we're proposing uh, before she does that. And so my, my initial reaction is that, yes, we, we should get this on the uh, commission's agenda to get them to ratify what we come up with, uh, but uh, to go ahead and send a copy to Joan so that Joan is given a heads up as to what we will be proposing. Does that sound reasonable? I see people shaking their heads. Uh, I was going to yeah, say, I think because, because oh. Patrick, go ahead. You're, you're starting first. Well, we don't have another open meeting until the 27th of April. And right. that's my concern. I'm generally interested in getting full approval from yeah. just in the interest of transparency. <laughs> but I think if we could come to what we recommend uh, without leaking early drafts to her, but if we could come to some agreement and approve something as a committee, I think it would be worth absolutely giving it to her and saying this is pending full commission approval, but this is what the committee is recommending. Right. That's what I'm what I'm suggesting. Okay. And I see Nancy shaking her head. So it looks like everybody's shaking their head. So we'll proceed yes. with that. And uh, and I was going to say one, one thing we may want to consider doing is maybe even going to the full commission and basically saying in the interest of time, we kind of, we can't keep waiting for a month for, for responses and maybe have the full commission kind of approve us to be able to make those decisions independently, as long as we, you know, keep them invo involved and, and informed. I don't know if that makes it messier or if it makes it more clean. But at least nope. I think that way they understand that there's, you know, a, there's a time deadline and waiting a month between providing feedback uh, might not be our best interest. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's an excellent, excellent suggestion. And I was going to suggest that because we need to move on this quite quickly. Right. You know, well, we, yeah, well, we, uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, we, we, we basically don't want to lose any time because yeah. time, time is, is, is important to us. And I'm sure that, the, well, can't speak for the commission, but I'm sure that, sure that they, they will. Yeah. And there are things coming up where we're, we're going to have to act quickly, uh, you know, like with regard to the budget and so forth. So that's, a, that's a good idea just to give us that authorization. So well, I have a question. Where does the Brown Act fit into all of this if we're acting so independently and um, not having our full commission and not having it presented? Where well, I'm not sure that it's a Brown Act. I mean, the Brown Act is an Open Meetings Act, and so th right. these, and so these, uh, actually, the ad hoc committee meetings don't have to be open. Uh, but uh, you know, sharing a draft of a document that would that would be included with the notice of a meeting anyway. So there's nothing. There's no Brown Act violation with sharing a draft of a uh, a draft of a document. I'm not sure that's what I'm asking. Then what? Clarify what you are asking. Um, 
I think she's asking about the proposal to ask the commission to give us authority to sure. act because if if the commission delegates authority to us where we're making decisions on behalf of the commission then we're into brown act territory because we're acting on behalf of a uh, of a city commission okay is, is so, that your, yeah is that your question nancy that's certainly one of the thoughts i had yes okay and that is the question uh maybe we can ask our uh independent counsel uh, about that. Uh, so Patrick, in your notes, if you can make a note that one of our to-do items is to follow up uh, with uh, our independent counsel to see if there's any uh, Brown Act or other issues with regard to delegating authority to a committee, especially an ad hoc committee. Okay, any other preliminary thoughts? Uh, and uh, okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. Did I successfully do that? Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, I know Patrick uh, said that he had several items uh i'm trying to think of uh whether it would be good to get the suggestions why don't we do this why don't we do it section by section and i'll keep an eye on the clock and uh, if, if we're coming up against the hour i'll give patrick a chance to uh add any re additional items um before he has to sign off okay and uh so um, why don't we just do it section by section? Uh, the definition section of the definition we actually had uh, agreed upon beforehand, but I went into a little bit more <clears throat> detail. Uh, and all this may not be included in the definition itself, but it kind of gives an overview of uh, what we are envisioning investigation um, to be. And then, you know, Joan can decide how that fits into the ordinance. But uh, in terms of uh, uh, the scope of an investigation and definition of investigation, any thoughts on that section? I have a small one. This comes out of the community roundtables. Um, so about a little more than, well, about halfway down the first paragraph, you have a parenthetical next to experts that includes medical experts, use of force experts. Um, and so I just asked a question, would it be worth inserting a couple other examples, given that the community at various, uh, about various commission, various aspects of the commission's work, the community wanted community-based experts to be involved. So you've got medical experts, but what about including mental health experts, addiction experts, uh, um, experts on the unhoused community or experiences of homelessness. Those were the three called out by community members. And I wondered if we might just, instead of listing a whole bunch of different potential experts, if we might not just say it's that a part of these investigations may involve um, gathering input from various community experts or something like that, um, as questions arise. Obviously that would require redacted, you know, very carefully um, circumscribed information about the complaint, but- um, Well, give yeah. me an example of what you mean by that. So we've got, so you've got medical experts here, but uh, a lot of the, okay, we're not allowed to talk about specific cases. So speaking very generally, we see a lot of complaints that come from contacts involving mental health concerns, um, people with addiction concerns, and uh, the unhoused community. Um, in community roundtables, the feedback we've gotten is that we should be calling on mental health experts, addiction tre treatment experts, harm reduction, and so on and people who work with the unhoused community um, to help us think about what's going on in these encounters. So this would be an opportunity to name or at least create 
some kind of heading for involving those kinds of folks. Okay. Well, I think addiction experts would be included under mental health experts. Um, no, those are very separate domains. Well, I, I disagree. Um, addiction is part of mental health. Yes, but in terms of the professional groups, there are very different, um, uh, professionally speaking, there are people who identify as harm reduction treatment and so on, but who wouldn't identify as mental health experts. But I wonder if all of these could be grouped under community experts or something like that, that just creates the possibility for us to speak with others as needed. Um, okay, well, I can, we can put, I mean, is there any objection to putting uh, uh, community experts? Yeah, or maybe subject matter experts? Yeah, there you go, perfect. Subject matter experts, that's it. That's more better. Okay, and so I, um, so what are you on today? <laughs> I'm all giggly. I'm more better. Okay. Um, <laughs> anything else in that section? Um, then in terms of the investigative hearing, it, it, it's not really a definition, but it's more of a description. Uh, but I was having a hard time uh, coming up with the definition because it really... Uh, but I think that explains what our concept is here. And again, this is not necessarily the language. This is just giving um, Joan the concept so that she can put it into the form of uh, what needs to go into uh, an ordinance, assuming she agrees that it needs to go into the ordinance. Isn't it like an in-person meeting to, to, uh, to look into these issues? Or not necessarily in person, but... It is a meeting, right? Since I'm sharing my screen, I can still make changes to the document as I go along, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me go back and uh, let me do that. Um, so hold on just a second here. I was going to say, Nancy, to answer your question, I think part of what um, the city attorney was asking for is, is she wanted to kind of at least get our initial thoughts of what an investigation was right sure. um, and then I yeah, so that that's really that's it's the first step of this, and I think she'll then review it, and I'm sure have questions and feedback and you know, she'll get back with us. Okay, now I, oh. Oh, oh, oh so Patrick, you were, you, you were just showing me where it was, right, Patrick? E yes, I, I found <laughs> my annotation screen. Okay, I didn't know what that was suddenly. And then, um, and so Nancy, you were suggesting we had to put, um, put in, conducted in person, is that what you were saying? In person or video. But it is a meeting of, of people to to do these things. Okay, is a uh, is an in person is a, is a meeting. Yes. Okay, conducted by the panel of um, commission members. Okay. And, uh, and actually, that, that kind of makes it more into a definition. So, thank you, Vanessa. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, Okay, and then uh, the items to be included in the ordinance, and these are the things that become part of the law um, and can only be changed by going through the cumbersome process of uh, amending it, amending the ordinance. Uh, but it ought to, so it ought to include the, only those things that are essential, but also those things that are really important. Um, and so the first uh, item I have here is. Uh, uh, making sure that we receive in a timely manner and then in other documents so we can talk about what we can define timely manner uh, but uh, all those things that are necessary for us to do all of our jobs and so this isn't, isn't necessarily related just to the investigation it's also related to uh, um, policy recommendations uh, making sure that uh, the uh, department is in compliance with uh, reporting requirements as well as discipline recommendations. So I had a couple thoughts, but I, I'm not sure if this is appropriate for the ordinance. I just wanted to ask. 
um, the first thing is, should we specifically name the IA investigation reports here to make sure the ordinance requires IA to give us a copy, uh, even for um, OIS and ICD cases where we're required to do an independent investigation? Um, and the second question is, do you think the ordinance should call out some of the specific things that, <clears throat> pardon me, came out of the, com the fifth community roundtable, like dispatch records, a live continuous access to dispatch, a dispatch terminal, and or GPS data about officer location? Yeah, none of those would go into an ordinance. They probably okay. would go into the uh, MOU. Okay. And so when we get to that, uh, we... Uh, keep that thought because when we get to the MOU, uh, I was kind of general there, but I think I actually thought about the, the same uh, thing, especially with regard to getting copies of the uh, the reports. I wanted to make sure that uh, even when we do our independent investigations, we also have uh, the uh, the benefit of their investigation, which I think it's clear under the uh, charter we would, but it needs to be, uh, we need to make sure that it happens. Okay, then the next item I had here is that uh, we think that it's, and I think, by the way, uh, that we're going to get pushback over uh, discipline history, uh, but I put it in there expecting to get discipline, expecting to get uh, pushback. Um, expecting to get discipline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doug, I have, a, I have a question that I, I guess I'm just not clear about. Um, so you think that the... Um, uh, issue of getting access to all IA reports and recommendations and all that do, does not need to be in the ordinance, but just in the MOU. But it seems to me that if it's in the ordinance, it will assist in the process of getting it in the MOU. Well, I, I, I think it is covered uh, by uh, uh, all information and materials necessary for us to conduct this business. Well, okay. I just I think that's a little vague, and I th I'm just hoping that that's not going to be a a problem that's going to be argued about, and it, it can't really be argued about if it's in the ordinance. Yeah, and it actually what it says here, Doug, is all evidence related, okay. and an investigative report is not evidence. So I think I think I agree with Kate. I think a sentence saying this includes I, uh, I a investigative reports and so discipline. All, all, yeah, all evidence and investigation investigative reports. Yeah, related. Okay, Kate, does that do it to add that phrase? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I I am not familiar enough with what reports would mean. Whether it means just the reports or also their, you know, their sort of final. Report and recommendation. And how about investigation documents? Because then documents, whatever it is, we would get. Well, but that, that doesn't include, for example, shooting panel reports, discipline reports, and we still do want to see those after the fact. And related investigation documents related to. I think invest. I think investigation documents does it. Okay. I think that includes all the reports. Um, uh, I just wonder if that's going to be a sticking point in the MOU, a kind of bargaining chip. And yeah, well, again, we can. Uh, we're just kind of giving her feedback. We can look at what language she comes up with, and then we can okay. respond to that. Um, and the next item is uh, the authority to compel officers to attend uh, both hearings as well as. Uh, interviews by investigators and be responsive. I think that's the correct legal term, right, Kate, uh, to questions for interviews? Shouldn't and, it be and respond to, or is and be responsive to the right? I thought and be responsive is what I heard, but uh, okay. Kate, uh, you were shaking your head, but let me just have you verbally confirmed that that's the right lang legal language. It's because I'm still muted, because my phone <laughs> was ringing. <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure that it really matters. I, I I prefer be responsive to questions to rather than respond to questions because you can respond by just saying, you know, 
forget it. Screw you. I mean, I, <laughs> would, would it help to also add the word a uh, fully responsive? Or is that redundant? To attend and be fully responsive to questions. I, that sounds better to me. I, I just, um, I'm very familiar with people saying, well, I responded to your question by saying I'm not going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, I, 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 did, I just know that the word re responsive to questions is a term I keep hearing over and over again in the George Floyd, <laughs> Floyd trial. Maybe, so. um, maybe fully responsive in good faith or something like that. Because I think, I mean, it, theoretically, someone could respond, but they, you know, they could respond to the answer with, you know, purple, you know, something that doesn't even answer the question, really, but they've responded theoretically. I mean, I think we're trying to think of how can we make this as bulletproof as possible, so there's no wiggle, or very little wiggle, wiggle room. Right. Well, and again, we're going to rely on the attorney to do this for us. And so I think that kind of communicates what our... I think when I talked to, to John up in, at the Oakland office... Um, the language he used was, he focused on the shall. And, you know, the, the, the phrase that came after that was shall attend and respond or be responsive to. So I think this is, I think this is right. It's okay. the shall that he focused on. Okay. And I think compel is the same as shall. Uh, I did have a question if, so thinking about that issue that John raised about the second interview and what happens if officers are called for any kind of second interview, they get access to the full file before responding. So I wondered if this might not be a place, and I, I have no idea, but it seems like we might need ordinance strength behind making sure that these are simultaneous interviews or somehow saying CPP must be involved in the first interview with a subject officer, the first administrative interview with a subject officer, something like that to make sure that we don't, you know, they could say, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll write this in, but you always go after IA and that disadvantages us. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how to add. I, I hear the point that you're, you're saying, um, Let's hold that thought because I'm not sure how to add it in. Um, but I was going to say, you know, also, I don't, that actually would hurt internal affairs as well. Um, so I don't think they'd want to do that because that would mean that if, if IA interviewed them first and then we were to do it second, IA would still have to hand over all of their documents, which they would not want to do. Um, so I don't, I mean, I get your point and I agree, but I, I, I don't think they would force that because that actually puts them at a disadvantage because they have to release everything they found during their investigation, which they probably don't want to do by having that second interview. I, 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 uh, be I believe you and I hope that that's true. I, the reason I'm hesitant is that j this featured very prominently in John's advice to us. Yeah. And, and so I wonder if that doesn't suggest a history of a conflict around this very question, you know? That's the only, that's, it's, yeah. it's stuck with me since that conversation. But aren't we also saying in the prior paragraph that the commission has access, to, the police department has to turn over all of their investigative records and documents? Yeah, but this isn't about that. It's about the POBAR requirements, the first or second interview question. It's the officer gets. plus it's Kate, the, that previous bullet point is that they have to turn over their files to us. Right. Whereas if we do the second interview, what Brandon's saying is IA would have to turn over their files to the officer oh. before the case is closed. That's, I think that's the point Brandon was making. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. And the next one, um, I'm not positive it should be in the ordinance, uh, but I think that it's important enough uh, that we should put it in the ordinance. So let me see if you agree that... Uh, having uh, access to the uh, crime scene uh, or the, I think I used incident scene, it may not be a crime in officer involved shootings and in custody deaths that uh, um, that's more of a procedural issue, which 
but I think it's significant enough that it should be in the ordinance. Do people agree? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's not the kind of thing I think you would normally put in an ordinance, uh, but on the other hand, I think it's significant enough that, well, they can always tell us no, but I think it's better to, um, in the process for issuing subpoenas and uh, what happens if they don't uh, respond and provide false testimony. Um, if we're gonna conduct investigatory hearings and we need to put into the ordinance that we have the ability to conduct those hearings. Um, the standard of proof uh, required for sustained findings, uh, which is preponderance of the evidence, which means uh, more likely than not in in layman's terms, correct, uh, Kate? Yeah, we we say generally fifty point one percent, as as opposed to um, beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. So there's, there's basically three different uh, standards. There's a preponderance of the evidence. Uh, there is uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, and there's also clear and convincing. Uh, which is a higher standard um, and I know some use a clear and convincing for the standard in here and I don't think we should be using that we should use it more likely than not um, and then requiring that the chief of police uh, respond to investigation findings so I'm not sure it does any good to have us make a finding that we find that the officer is responsible uh, unless the uh, chief of police is required to do something with our findings. Otherwise, it's just an exercise in uh, uh, I'm not quite sure if the right word is there. It wouldn't be futility, but uh, we want to make sure that uh, the chief of police is not re required to accept our findings, uh, but I think that the requirement that the chief of police should be required to respond to our our findings. Um, and then I put probably investigations should be completed by, but I'm not quite sure by when, by the date uh, per poor bar requirements. I don't know. So I had a question about this and then a couple other questions about maybe other bullet points. Um, so I included it here, but also later in the document. I'm thinking about, so given the one year deadline for discipline on all administrative investigations, if we're, if we decide after reviewing an IA case that we want then to do an, uh, even a partial independent investigation, I'm, it's hard to figure out how to frame this. I, I can see med, I can I can easily imagine a situation where we get the IA report so late that there's no time for us to do an independent investigation before the end of the year. And so I started thinking about, and I know that we would get pushback on this, but you know, if we think backwards from whatever that one year deadline is, if we had a guaranteed, say, four months, um, then that would be something. I don't, I mean, that just four months is what came to me because it's plenty of time, I, I would think, to do an investigation, write up the report, and then take it, you know, do an investigative hearing if need be, and then take it to the full commission. Um, but there's got to be something in there because even as things are now, when we don't have the ability to toggle a, an independent investigation, it happens pretty frequently that we get cases pushing right up against that one year deadline. Okay, and this would be, uh, this would be the, when our debt, when our investigations would, would um, need to be completed. I get that, but it just, it prompted this question. Yeah, yeah it does, so, and so maybe the, uh, the issue of when uh, IA investigations are provided to us needs to be in the memorandum of understanding. And 
Internal Affairs is required to do their investigations. Um, I believe it's within, within 60 days or 90 days. There's something in their procedures. Okay, but they don't hold to that. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's something that the commission needs to look at also as far as um, looking at when those procedures, how the procedures are written and maybe make a recommendation to change those procedures because sometimes it can take several months and then I get the, um, the um, investigation to, to assign it to the commission teams and there's a fast turnaround time of sometimes a month or sometimes um, a couple of weeks or well, and that raises the issue of tolling, which is this ill-defined Ill practice. I don't know what their SOP says, but if a, if, a, if a complaint is told or an investigation of told, it gets taken out of time and it can, it can languish in a file for months. Um, and but so- But it's when they have a city, a, a city case of, of some kind, Patrick. No, That's this all is. I've ever seen. Oh no! Okay, it could also be a criminal case, but it, it isn't the department center got pre procedures. It's uh, it's I think it's oh. case law with regard to. Uh, no, 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 no! I'm not talking about cases told because there's a homicide investigation. I'm no, talking about homicide. Or, if there's a lawsuit, they can. Or get if there's a lawsuit, there are. Right. The, we have seen numerous cases where IA decided to toll a case. And then we got it very late. And when we asked them, I mean, I'm thinking of a very particular case I know I can't talk about, um, but this has happened numerous times where there's no, there's no clear procedural justification for tolling a case. And yet it has been on the shelf for months. But that doesn't, main, that doesn't change the amount of time you have left in the investigation for, and to complete the case. Exactly, that's the problem. Charmaine, you remember the case, you know less. what I'm talking about. Oh yes, it, the, the one year is still there. No, no, it's not. The one year is interrupted. That's what tolling means, Patrick. I'm telling you, I, I, have, I have been the lead reviewer on several cases where the one okay. year deadline was imposed, but we were told that IA told the case for undefined reasons and so our deadline was the same, but we didn't get it until months after um, no, we should have gotten it. Okay, well, I, 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 I'm not sure. That, I, I hear the point you're breaking. I'm not sure it needs to be included in the ordinance. Okay. Uh, and I'm wondering that in hearing this discussion that maybe we ought to just take out this bullet item because, uh, and yeah. one reason is that, uh, of course, the, the POA is maintaining that an investigation um, is the same thing as a sustained finding. In other words, you can't continue to investigate or can't continue to make recommendations beyond the, uh, beyond the year. And so, in the, so if, for example, we got a case that was uh, completed right up against the year and when the commission got it, we said, hey, wait a second, there's some things here that aren't right. We want to do our own investigation. If we put a deadline in the ordinance, we may be tying our own hands in terms of being able to do a, a dead to do an investigation, even though the deadline for discipline has expired. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was going to say. I don't think that you should um, put a restriction on your ability to continue <laughs> to investigate, even if even if the one year for discipline is run. I mean, that's that's what happened with Clerb in those twenty two death cases. Okay, well, I just took it out. <laughs> they thought they couldn't proceed because um, because the one year statute had run, and and I, I just I think that's a misunderstanding of of uh, the commission's ability. Okay, I think so. Taking it out of the out of the ordinance probably makes sense, and then that kind of solves the issues. But we, we still want to include in our MOU uh, at some agreements as to when we're going to get cases that we're going to be reviewing. Okay, Any, anything, Patrick, you said you have some other items you thought should be in the ordinance itself? Um, yeah, but let's not discuss them. I don't actually think they should be here and I've included them in the document notes that I sent to you. So why don't you review them later? I don't want to take up more time. I don't, I don't actually think they belong here. Okay. Oh, except for one, except for one. And it's one that we started developing last year. 
and I do think it should go in the ordinance. It is for invest and, and it's for investigative hearings, but it is that complainants shall be afforded the same rights afforded to officers by POBAR laws. That's how we had framed it in last week's discussion. And I, I, I feel like that is a really important balancing of the scales. I don't think we need to name specific aspects of those laws because they may change in time and we don't wanna to be tied to what's in, in effect right now. There may be other case law and so on that, that affects them. But I think we should spell out that complainants get the same, they're afforded the same rights that subject officers get because of POBAR. Thank you. I, I put complainants uh, shall be afforded the same rights affor afforded uh, to, to subject officers during investigative hearings. Does that capture it? Yes, thank you. And is there any disagreement with that? Okay, then we'll add that by consensus. Okay, and then the next uh, item are things that uh, would be in the uh, standard operating procedures. Again, this would um, be things that uh, would still have to be adopted by the city council. It's intended to be a high level, so we don't wanna go into too much detail. Um, and uh, would be something that uh, would likely be subject uh, to uh, to meet it confer, but it's much easier to modify a standard operating procedure than it is to modify an ordinance. So the first thing I put here uh, was uh, mediation procedures. Uh, so I wanted to make clear uh, that uh, A, we have the ability to mediate um, and, uh, and then I put it very general here saying that the uh, um, standard operating procedures um, would indicate what types of cases could be referred for mediation. And also my thinking here is to keep this section entirely general. Uh, and then if uh, an offer to the city attorney's office, a willingness on our part to help draft the uh, standard operating procedures, uh, because you know to the degree at which we take the lead, the more likely it's gonna be something that is to our liking. Um, the second one was uh, the process for determining uh, when we're going to investigate. And I put here that th this could be anywhere in the process. It could be at the beginning of the process, in the middle of the process, or at the end of the process. Um, and, uh, and then the procedures are what happens after we have an investigation report. Um, maybe I put, maybe I should put here from the uh, commission's independent or the commission's investigator. So it's clear that it's not the IA investigator. Anyway, so that we would put in positions, you know, if we get a report, what, do we, what can we do with that report? You know, we can agree with the findings, we can disagree with the findings, we can send it back for further investigation, we could ask for a hearing, uh, et cetera. Um, and then including uh, procedures for the hearings themselves. Uh, these are all those various different things we talked about last week without going into detail what they would be, just indicating what topics would need to be included. In other words, who would be allowed to attend, what kind of notice would be required, um, who, would be, who would compose the panels, uh, who would be allowed to ask questions, uh, who's allowed to have a, an advocate present, uh, what's the agenda, what evidence is admissible, uh, how do they deliberate, et cetera. And I also put, uh, and, and the public, uh, so that it's, we clarify in the standard operating procedures uh, when uh, investigative hearings would be open to the public. Um, and then I put here uh, procedures for reviewing a shooting review board reports, which may not fall. Well, actually, I guess they do because uh, we're going to be doing our own investigations of officer involved shootings. Uh, but I want to make sure that somewhere in the document we specify that the commission will be reviewing shooting review board reports. 
um, you because know, you know currently there's nothing in the well there there was nothing in the uh, charter for the CRB uh, that uh, gave us the authority to uh, review shooting review board reports. Uh, we just, just made the argument that we should be doing it, and the department agreed. Uh, but we ought to have it in the governing commits. Okay. Uh, then the items uh, to be included in the MOU. Uh, the most important one, maybe, maybe not the most important, but an important one is the schedule of the uh, evidence and files that we need uh, from uh, the, uh, the police department and similar to the MOU that the San Francisco the police department has. Um, um, an agreement that internal affairs uh, will not uh, close a case until we have the opportunity of reviewing it. Um, an agreement that we're going to have a joint uh, complaint tracking process, um, ideally uh, with commission staff having access to IA Pro. Um, we'll see what they say. Um, uh, and maybe we got to put in in here a uh, process for process and timeline so that uh, even if we, we don't have a joint uh, tracking process, uh, that uh, there is a deadline when reports, complaints they receive are transmitted to us. Um, and then uh, conducting a joint interviews with IA and commission investigator of cases. Uh, I put that in both the ordinance uh, and here, we talked about that last week. We thought that it was important to include in the ordinance itself, uh, but also to uh, have there. Uh, I thought the training items would be good to include. Uh, and then uh, uh, Doug, I, can you can you on that last bullet point? Um, I, I completely agree. And I also think we should be training them <laughs> on the things that the commission knows. So training opportunities available to commissioners and CPP staff and training opportunities um, offered to SDPD and IA about community oversight, community engagement, and so on. I'm thinking, for example, of Jason Wechter doing a training on effective investigators or investigations and how not to lead ask leading questions interview interviews right yeah so we might yeah training opportunities offered to sdpd investigators by cpp or commissioners and staff yeah, or maybe so, by, sort by of the balances yeah i think that sort of balances it out okay, and then deadline of deadlines for receiving completed uh, ia investigations um, and again i'm some of these things are not really related to our investigations but i don't think it goes it hurts to put them in this document even though there may be other items we're going to include later um, so okay and then i anything else in the mou and again this is an uh, what's the word organic document or a living document and so we can you know add to this as we go along um, and probably the MOU is down the road anyway the most immediate thing is the ordinance um, and then further down the road um, um, <clears throat> are the uh, procedures of the uh, commission and I say further down the road because I think to a large degree we want to try to 
identify these things, but to wait for the permanent commission to be appointed before we act and let them do the drafting of that, if that makes sense. Um, but I want to put in the document here somewhere. Um, and I know that it's going to uh, cause some consternation within the department, but make it clear that uh, the com commission does its own background checks for our staff positions. And so we're not going to have uh, the department uh, deciding, uh, conducting the background staffs for our staff. Um, uh, that the uh, commission. Um, so I have a question about that. Does that that just means paid staff, or does that also mean commissioners? Well, this item is for staff, but I think uh, uh, I would add and commissioners. Yeah, and actually, it, it makes sense to add, add commissioners. Okay. Um, um, and I'm wondering whether or not. Um, Sorry to interrupt real quick on that because I, I Doug, like you, I, I anticipate there's certain things the department and and or the union will push back on. I'm wondering if we might need to clarify that a little bit because I could see them saying, "Well, if you guys are basically doing your own background check of yourselves, how effective is that going to be? Do we need to maybe say that it'll be a background check by, you know, some law enforcement agency? I mean. I know way back in the day, I know at least when I was applying to be on the CRB, I think they said it was an FBI background check. I don't, and that's not what happened when I did it, but I think that was just old. I mean, I don't know if we say it's at least a law enforcement agency that's doing the background check or something. I mean, that might make them more comfortable with it. It's a good one. So commission to a contract or to. Well, yeah. Why don't you say just to contract it's a. Uh, uh, to, to contract. Um, agency agencies for conducting yeah that's good or conducting and then cut own background checks for c yeah okay um okay yep. the uh and i'm wondering uh, whether we had to put that somewhere else because this is going to be an internal thing so i don't want us to say well this is what we're going to do and have the department say no maybe we got to put that in the mou as well does that make sense yeah yep. yeah probably so well, i they put... get the results of that background check because that's how you in the mou you could put it in that form oh i like that there everybody agree with nancy that they could that ia can review the results of the background yeah, check right. yeah i think that okay. makes sense I uh, can review the results of, um, and I like to put it in a positive way. Um, yes. but, they, but they don't uh, have veto power. No, we I, didn't say that. They just have I, access to They it. can just see them, okay. I'm gonna say the department, not just internal. Uh, so the, should we put maybe, a, but not veto power? <laughs> no. Uh, I, I wouldn't put that in there. Okay. Either. Yeah, they can review them. That's good. Just, just let them review it. Let's, let's leave it at that. Okay. Um, then the commission uh, to... Uh, Doug, just to give you a heads up, I'm in a five-minute five minute warning. Okay. <laughs> Are there any uh, items on your list uh, that you want to talk about during those five minutes? I think you've got... I mean, there are a few additional notes there about dispatch terminal and so on, but I think you can review those on your own and figure out where they go. That's it, everything else look good, looks good to me. Okay, uh, so let me just finish here. Uh, the satisfaction surveys we talked about, uh, uh, well, actually, we, we, actually what we talked about was the, the climate survey of the staff and commissioners. What I added, which I think is that, hopefully you agree it's a good idea, is that we ought to be doing surveys with complainants and subject officers to see how they feel about the process. Um, I like that. Yeah. And, and um, then uh, putting in the training requirements for the commissioners and staff, the records retention policy, and uh, how we respond to PRAs, and then put in there the procedures for publishing our redacted, uh, our redacted investigations. Okay. Great job, Doug. Great document. 
then is it okay with everybody? Uh, if, uh, well, well, do I have permission to do some minor flushing based upon uh, Patrick's uh, notes? As long as it's not substantive of a major issue we haven't talked about, and then go ahead and uh, send this to a Joan, uh, saying this is where our, what our discussions are so far. We're going to be sending this to, to the uh, full commission for their ratification, um, and making it clear that this is only a partial list uh, that deals primarily with the investigation issues, and that we will have further recommendations on discipline issues, policy recommendations, et cetera. Is there any objection to doing that? No. Okay. Then uh, we have three minutes left. And so the final item on our agenda is any other, uh, well, the date of our next meeting, which I assume will continue to meet on Fridays at noon. And then the last item is any other items and or concerns. Uh, can I just make a comment? Sure. Um, I just want everyone to know and commend Patrick on um, the great work that he did in the, at the Mid-City Can Youth Council um, uh, event that happened this week. And um, he, was, he was very um, uh, articulate, of course, as always, but also very appreciative of the involvement of youth and the Youth Council. And uh, I just, I don't know if other people were able to see that, but I just want to commend him on that. Thank you, Kate. I, I was, I got to tell you, they're amazing, those youth. I mean, I knew that, but to see them in action, they put together a fantastic little discussion. Um, it was, I was, I was moved to tears at certain points when they were introducing themselves, the youth. Uh, I'm getting a little emotional now thinking about it. I was just, I was very, very moved and impressed by um, by what they did. So thank you, Kate. Okay. And then also I was going to include in the, uh, in the cover email to uh, Joan that uh, we would like for the ordinance to clarify uh, who's responsible for providing uh, defense of the uh, commission if we were to get sued. Um, that we don't think it should be the city attorney's office. Uh, we think it should be uh, outside counsel that we select. Um, Joan did send us, I mean, it, the, the city is responsible for providing us, a, not only indemnifying us, uh, but also providing us a defense. Uh, that They are required by law to do that. Um, but it doesn't say who's, who's going to provide that defense. And... Uh, I think that we should uh, include in the ordinance that if we are to be sued, uh, that the um, we would be defended by outside counsel that we select. But paid for by the city? Yeah, paid for by the city, yes. Paid for by the city, but we select. Right. Uh, then, uh, and they may want to have joint approval on that. And if they come back with that, we can talk about that. Uh, and if I were the city attorney, if they're going to be paying for it, they probably want to sign off on on it. But anyway, I'm not going to put that in my uh, in my suggestion. Okay, anything else? Um, then it is exactly according to my computer one o'clock, and we will adjourn on time. Thank you very much, and have a great weekend. Thank have you, Doug. Weekend. I'm going to Thank send you. the minutes right now to everybody. Great. Thank you. Yeah. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.